Hey guys, and welcome to another one of my tutorials. So in this video, I'll be showing you how to set up a turn-based multiplayer game. And it's basically just the foundation of it, like getting the server set up so that it switches whose turn it is, and then only allowing the player to move when it's his turn, and stuff like that. So just kind of show you how it works here. You can see we have a server and a client running. And on the server, it says it's my turn. So what I can do is I can select one of my characters. So I can select this guy and I can have him move wherever I want. And you can see he moves. And then on the other screen, you can see he also moves back over here. And then now it's the other player's turn. So he can select a character and move. And if you look, you can see that she's running on the other screen and so on. So I try to keep this very generic where it's just the foundation so that you guys can expand on it and customize it to work however you want. So the only actions you can do are move and you can also attack. However, I didn't go into crazy detail with the attack. I basically just set it up so that when you click on somebody when it's your turn and then you click on the enemy, the server will print out that the attack happened and then it will switch, uh, switch sides. So there's a, basically a node where you can write whatever code you want to do on the server, like applying damage or whatever for your game, or maybe you have something else that happens when you when you want to do this. Because I, I didn't want to go into like great detail where, you know, it was a very specific attack because I realized a lot of people probably aren't even making a game like this. They could be making chess or something. So I tried to just set up the basic logic behind everything and hopefully you guys can expand upon that um, for whatever type of game you're making. So with that being said, let's go ahead and jump right into it. So I am using Unreal Engine 5. So what I'm gonna do um, is we're gonna be doing this totally from scratch. So open up the Epic Game Launcher and then launch UE5. So if you don't have Unreal Engine 5, that's fine. This will work in Unreal Engine 4 as well, but I'm just using it because it's the new hotness basically. So we're gonna give this a second to launch. And then while that's happening, let me just move this guy over here. Oh, it looks like I already had this open, okay. So what we wanna do is we want to select games and then we're just gonna be doing this from a totally blank project. So we're gonna select blank and then the project name, I'm just gonna call it turn-based tutorial. And then we wanna make sure we have blueprint selected here. And I think that's it. So go ahead and create, oh, uh, for starter content. Um, yeah, make sure you have starter content selected because we are using a couple of little things in there if you want it. And so let's go ahead and say great project. All right, so now Unreal Engine 5 is open. So first thing I wanna do is delete this stuff down here because we obviously do not want it. All right, and then the next thing is you probably noticed in my other project that I had these fancy little characters here. So these are actually from the marketplace and they are totally free. However, you do not need them in order to follow along with this tutorial. I just kind of added them for a bit of, for a bit of pizzazz, I guess. <laughs> so these characters, if you're interested, are the Paragon, I have no idea how to say that, but it's right there, and Paragon Yin. So I'm gonna really quickly add these to the project. I'll show you where to find them. Again, you don't even have to do this to follow along with this tutorial. I just kind of want to have it just to make it a little bit nicer so we're not using boxes. So if you go to the Epic Game content and you search for these names, so let me see real quick. So search over here. So if you just search for Paragon, they should show up. So here is Yen. So what you wanna do here, if you don't already have this, you can sit, you can hit add to cart and then it will add to your cart and then you have to hit buy over here on the right if you've never done it before. And then the other one is in here somewhere as well. What is he called? Paragon. Chimera. Um, here he is. So once you have those both downloaded, you want to go to your library tab and then they will show up over here in your vault. And then you can just search for them and you can see here they are. So we have this guy and Yin. So I'm going to do this uh, real quick and then I'll edit it out, but I'm just going to add both of these to the project. So to do this, you just, for both of them, you just hit add to project. And then you search for the project name. So or is this called, uh, what is it called? Turn base tutorial. And you wanna select this. You might have to select show all projects here if it's not showing up because depending on what Unreal Engine version you are, it might not be 
showing up because it might th might think it's not compatible, but in reality, it's going to be compatible because this is just very basic content. And then we hit add project. And yeah, so we want to do that for both. So as soon as that's done, um, I'm just going to edit the edit this part out and then we'll resume. All right, so we've gone ahead and added both of them to the project. So your project should look like this if you follow along with this step. Again, you don't have to, um, but just to kind of show you guys how to add more characters, I wanted to do something like this. So you should have a Paragon Chimera and a Paragon Yin in your project. And so inside of here is just all the, you know, all the blueprints for her and him. I don't even know where they are, but we don't need to worry about this right now. We'll kind of come back to this later. I just wanted to get it set up so we didn't have to take a break in the middle of the tutorial to do it. So let's go ahead and get started on the actual level real quick. So we're just going to make something really simple here. Obviously, you can do whatever you want, but we need some sort of ground to walk on. So up here under contents or no, create maybe we want to go to place actor panel and this will bring up this guy over here and we want to place a let's see. What did I use my other project? I think I used a floor. Does floor show up? If we search for floor. Oh, I think it's in the starter content actually. Go to starter content, maybe just search for floor. Yeah, this is the guy I used. So I'm just gonna drag this guy in. And then I'm gonna put him at zero, zero, zero. And then let's just scale him up really big. I'm not gonna make it as fancy as I did my other project, even though it's really not that fancy my other project. Okay, so maybe that's a little bit too big. Let's just do six, six maybe, okay. So here's our wonderful level so that we can have something to walk on. And the next thing we want to do is start setting up our game mode and stuff so that we can make it turn-based. So let's go back to our content folder and let's make a new folder here and we're going to call it core. So this is going to be where all of our core stuff go, like our game mode and our player controller and all that good stuff. So let's go inside here. And the first thing I want to do is create a game mode. So right click and we want to go to blueprint class and we want to go to all classes and we want to search for game mode. So when you search for game mode down here, um, you'll have two options. So you have game mode base and then just normal game mode. So if you hover over these, it kind of tells you what I'm about to tell you, but uh, game mode is a subclass of game mode base and it is used for multiplayer matched games. So if you're making a multiplayer game, you got to make sure that you select game mode and not game mode base. That's really important. If you don't do that, probably things don't work so well, work out so well, and it probably will be pretty unobvious as to why. So make sure you select game mode and then hit select. And we are going to call this turn based game mode. And so we'll be adding code in here later, but for right now, let's just finish creating the core files that we're going to need. So the next one we want is a game state. So right click, Go to blueprints again, or sorry, blueprint class. And again, we want to search for game state. And again, make sure you select this game state and not game state base, because this one's for multiplayer. And then we'll call it turn base game state. And then let's see. So the next thing we want is a player controller, because we're going to kind of have our own sort of player controller that flies around and behaves as we like. So let's right click and go to blueprint class and you can just select it up here i believe so we want to select player controller and for this one we will just call it the turn based player controller and then we're almost done <laughs> so we want a pawn as well because we need somebody to actually possess so we're going to right click blueprint class pawn and we will call this the turn based pawn and then the last one we need right here is a player start location. Because if you notice from our other example project here, you have the host or the server starting on one side and the client starting on the other side. And in order to accomplish this, we want to make our own little custom starting spawn point so we can specify who spawns where. Because we don't really want it to be random. We want the server always to spawn on this side and the client to always spawn on this side. So the last thing we want to do is create a turn-based player start. So right click and go to blueprint classes and you want to search for player start. And so we can select this and we will just call it the turn-based player 
start, and then file, save all before Unreal crashes. All right, so let's start out doing the, or actually before we do that, let's set up the game mode real quick. Because if we open up the game mode here and we look on the right, or sometimes it's just right here in your face, depending on which version you're on, we have all these options we can set. So we wanna set these to the newly created options that we just made. So the game state class, we wanna to set to our turn-based game state. The player controller class, we wanna to set to our turn-based player controller. The default pawn, we wanna to set to our turn-based pawn. And I think that is it. So then we can file, save all again. I recommend getting in the habit of file saving all or control shift S as much as possible because as you probably know, Unreal really enjoys to crash when you least would like it to. All right, so what was I saying? Oh yeah, so we want to specify where the characters are going to spawn because, or where the players are gonna spawn. So if you notice right now, if we just switch this to uh, two players, and we set the net mode to listen server and we hit, I'm gonna use this one so we get two new windows. We hit this button up here. You can see we are currently spawning sort of, um, sort of in a random spot. And we also have this little sphere thing that we're flying around as. So we wanna change all of this. We wanna be able to specify exactly where they spawn so that they spawn on the left side and one on the right side. And we don't wanna have that sphere class. So one thing we need to do is we need to come over here to the world settings because I forgot to do this. And the selected game mode, or no, this one, the, the game mode override, we wanna switch this to our turn-based game mode. So that's gonna tell it to please go ahead and use the turn-based game mode that we just created. Um, and then just an FYI, you can also come up here and go to the project settings and go to your maps and modes. Oops, sorry, maps and modes. And then you can also change the game mode here. So if you change it here, this changes it globally for the whole project. So no matter what map you're on, it's gonna use whichever game mode is here, unless you override it here in the override section. So I just kind of wanted to point that out in case there's some confusion. So you can either set it here and then not set it here, or you can set it here and not set it here, but you gotta do one or the other so that it will be used. So let's see what happens if we run this now. More or less the same thing, except you'll notice you now cannot fly around because we are now using our custom pawn, which we haven't added any support to yet. So obviously it makes sense that you can't fly around. But first and foremost, let's set it up so that we can spawn cameras on either side of the level. So normally the way you do this, um, just so you guys can understand my thought process here, is you, in the place actors window, you search for a spawn, or you search for a player start actor, so normally there's this one here. This one comes with Unreal. This is the one we derived from to make our turn-based start. And so you can drag this in and this will tell Unreal where to start your character. So if I put this, or actually there already is one right here. I forgot about that. Let me just delete this one. And we'll just take this guy and we'll put it over here. And then which way is it facing? So it's facing towards the uh, plane here. So if we press play, you can see both of our actors are gonna spawn at this location. So that's great. However, the problem is we have two cameras and we want one to spawn at one and one to spawn at the other. And the issue is that if we take this guy and I'm gonna duplicate it here, so just a shortcut, if you hold down Alt and then left click drag, it duplicates it, so now we have two. That's all I did there. So if we duplicate this and then rotate it, so we have one on the left and one on the right. And then just so we can tell which side is which, because this thing is just a very empty plane, I'm just gonna place a cube or something in the world so we know like one side has the Q on it and one side doesn't because otherwise it's gonna be really hard to tell. So let's just hit play. So we can see this guy spawns on the side with the cube and this guy doesn't. However, if you keep running this, you can see sometimes that doesn't actually happen. Like sometimes um, they spawn in the exact same location because the logic in Unreal, it's more or less just select, one, select a random one of these spawn points and spawn the guy there. So obviously that's not great because we, we wanna force Unreal to always select a specific one for a specific player. So essentially what we're gonna do is we're gonna delete these guys because not quite what we need. We're gonna use our custom turn-based uh, player start. And inside of here, we're gonna add a little bit of logic to force it to spawn player one at one of these and player two at the other one. 
So let's just drag these guys in to the world and set them up like we had before. Make sure you have them rotated the correct way. So the red, uh, wait, what? Oh, I guess, so this blue arrow here, like this light blue arrow here is the way they're actually facing. So make sure you have them facing the right way, like wherever you want them. Um, let me just put this guy over here and make sure he's facing the right way. Yes, he is, okay. So there's our two starts. And so in order to make it so that we can specify who spawns where, we basically wanna have an index on here, like over here in the details panel, like it'd be great if we could select this guy and down here we could change um, a number and say, use this spawn point for player one. And we could select this guy and say, use this spawn point for player two. And then that'd be perfect. So what we wanna do is open this up. And inside of here, we wanna add a variable on the left. So variable, and we will call this player index. And we're gonna switch the type of it to an integer. So like I was saying, this value, all this is gonna do is it's going to let us specify which player based on their index this spawn point belongs to and then for this we want to be able to edit this in the details panel so we want to make sure that we come over here um, if you don't know what these do i'll just walk you through these blue, these uh check boxes real quick so we want to set this to private the reason we're doing that is because we don't want classes outside of this class or blueprints outside of this blueprint to modify this variable so we're going to make it private we also want to make it expose on or actually no we don't want to make it expose on spawn because that um we're not actually spawning these things through blueprints so this only affects it if you're spawning the actor through blueprints it will actually show this variable on the spawn node but we're not going to do that because we just dragged them into our world right um, but we do want to select instance editable and so this is going to make it so that when we click on the instance of the spawn or the player start in the world we can actually edit this variable which you'll see in a second and then we also want to set it to blueprint read only um, and this is basically doing exactly what it sounds like. It makes it so you cannot set the variable because once the variable gets set um, in the details panel on the right in the editor, we never want it to change um, either you know, by accident or whatever. So now if we compile and save this and we go back to our world, you can see now, so I'm gonna select this guy over here on the right. You can see now under our default section, we have a player index. So this is good because like I said, we can now specify um, which player this belongs to. So what I'm going to say is, we're going to use player zero for player one actually. And then for the other guy, let's set it to one. So the right side is going to be set to zero and the left side is going to be set to one. So zero essentially represents player one and an index of one represents player two. I know it's a little bit confusing, but that's just kind of how uh, games work. They always prefer to start with zero because <laughs> that's how kind of arrays work and it's just easier to do it that way. So there we go. Um, and so now we need to actually set it up because right now if we run it, obviously nothing is gonna change because all we've did is made a variable and nobody's actually using this variable. So in order to make use of this variable, we need to go inside of our game mode and tell Unreal to spawn at these locations based on how many people are currently in the game. So let's open up our game mode. This is where we're gonna be doing the majority of our code, I think. So. Let's see, let me just check out my other project here and figure out where the best place to get started is. So probably, probably here. So let me just, let's just uh, delete this stuff because I don't think we need these nodes and we can just get them out of the way. So we're just gonna delete them. And then, like I said, we wanna set this up so the game mode chooses where the player should start. So there's actually a handy function for this. So if you come over here on the left, we can actually override the choose player start. So this, this function is really nice because it returns, like it says, it allows you to return where you want the player to start from. So if we click on this, we can actually override this. So if you just do this, um, sorry, if you right click on this, you can say add call to parent function and that will just call the parent function. So if you did hook this up like this, just so you guys are aware, this would do exactly what it's currently doing because you're basically overriding the function, but then you're calling the parent function and returning whatever it returns. So it's pretty pointless to do it this way. I just kind of want to show you guys how this kind of works. So we're kind of cutting out this middle step here. We don't want to call the parents function because we want to we want to write the logic for figuring out where to spawn ourselves so that we can use our spawn points with our custom player indexes in them. So the first thing we need to do is we need to actually um, find those spawn points in the real, right? Because we need to have a reference to this guy and a reference to this guy. So what we're going to do is we're going to make a function over here so a new function, so we hit plus. 
and we're going to call it find, uh, no, we're going to call it initialize spawn points. And then in parentheses here, I'm going to put if needed. And I'm going to explain why we're going to do this in a second, or why we're calling this in a second. But for now, let's just call it this, and I'll explain it here shortly. So the purpose of this function is to find all these spawn points and save them in an array so we can access them. So what we want to do is we want to say get all actors of class. Now, I know probably some of you are thinking that we should never use this function because, like it says right here, it's very slow. However, we're only going to be doing this once at the very beginning of the game when the game first starts. So it's not like we're going to be doing this every single frame. So this is actually totally fine to do, and it's not going to cause any problems. So we want to search for our turn based uh, turn based player starts because this is the thing we're searching for. And then we want to take this and we want to loop over it. So we're going to do a for each loop. And then for each one of these guys, we want to add it to a map where it maps the player index of that spawn point, so either 0 or 1, to the spawn point itself. And the reason we're doing that is because it's going to make it infinitely easier for us to look them up later. So over here on the variable section, let's go ahead and create a variable. And we will call it spawn points. And then we want to change the type of it. So up here, we want to switch it to, actually, first of all, hit this little button to the right of it. And we want to search it, or we want to switch it to a map, although I realized we cannot do that yet because we need to switch this. So first, let's switch this to an integer, and then we can switch it to a map. And then we want to switch this right side to be turn, uh, turn based player starts object reference. So this is what it should look like. If you've never used a map before, I realize this can be a little bit confusing. But basically, a map is just a data structure, kind of like an array, except instead of having all the elements just laid out one next to the other inside the array, you can look up elements based on their key, which is the left side. So you can look, you can basically look up and get access to a player spawn point based on a specific integer. So for example, if we're looking for the spawn point for player one, we can pass in player one to the map and it'll return us that spawn point. But we need to add it to the array first. So let's take this and drag us over and say git, and we want to add, so we'll say add. And you'll notice it has an add function, just like an array. However, unlike an array, it also has a integer and a value. So it has, or sorry, a key and a value. So when you say add to a, to a map, or sorry, when you say add to an array, you only pass in the value, because it's only, you're, not, you're only adding one thing. But when you add something to a map, you have to spe specify the key, which is sort of the lookup key, and then the value, which is the thing that you find. So obviously the value is going to be this guy because it is our spawn point. And for the index, we basically want to pass in the player index of this spawn point. So what we need to do is we just need to make a quick accessor for this inside of our spawn point, call it, and hook it up here. So real quick, back in our turn-based player start, let's just add a function. And we're going to call this get player index and all we want to do is take the player index drag it in say git hook this up and hook this up so oh and we can also set it to pure and const so if you don't know what these do i'll just explain them real quick const basically means that the function this function is not changing anything about the class which of course it isn't because it's just returning a value and then pure makes it so that it looks like this i'll show you so if we call this function off of here, we can say get uh, player index. And so since we marked it as pure, it shows as green as opposed to something like this where it's blue and it has the execution pins. That's essentially what pure does. It's really nice to use for like getter functions because they just make your code a little bit cleaner in my opinion. All right, so we're just gonna hook this up like so, and there we go. So just to kind of review real quick, what we're doing is when this function gets called, we're searching for all the turn-based spawn points in the world, which again, are this guy and this guy. And then we're looping over them. And then for each one of them, we are getting the player index, which is either zero or one. And we are adding that to our map of spawn points where the key is the player index and the value is the spawn point itself. Now, one thing we wanna do real quick at the beginning of this function, just to 
uh, sort of as an optimization is like I was saying, we only want this to run because this is really expensive. So we don't want to do this every time this function gets called. Um, that's why we added the if needed. So what we want to do is we want to say, don't, don't actually do any of this if our map is already populated, because that means this function has already ran. So we can check that by just dragging in our spawn points map and getting the length of it and checking if it equals, or sorry, yeah, checking if it equals zero. And if it does equal zero, that means we need to run this function because this function has never been called before. So we can do a branch, hook this up, hook this up, and hook this up. So there we go. So now we just added some basic logic to make sure this function only runs one time. Um, and then back over here in our choose player start, we can now use this function to figure out where our player should spawn at. So the first thing that happens in here is that we want to call our initialize spawn point. Oh, and one thing I want to mention as well, um, if we come up here, this little gear button, we can say show access specifier in the blueprint view, and that will show us which functions are public and private because it's good to get into the habit of making functions private that really don't need to be called from outside the class, like this one we just created. So we should really set this to private and you can see it switches to private right here. And then also one thing I forgot as well is the spawn points. We want to set these to private as well, because again, we don't want these accessed from outside the class. In Unreal Engine 4, it used to show private in front of here, which was really nice. And in Unreal Engine 5, they removed it because, I don't know, because it was really nice and they just like to make things worse in Unreal Engine 5, I think. I think that was the plan with Unreal Engine 5. They're like, let's just make everything worse. And so, yeah, so that's that, but one, let's make sure we make this private. And we say initialize spawn point. So again, this is gonna populate this map. Um, and then we're gonna use this map to figure out where we should spawn. So what we wanna say is we wanna say get number of players or get um, players like this. So like I said before, this just returns the current number of players. And then we wanna use this number to figure out which spawn point is the best. So. We can do that because if we drag in our spawn points, we can drag off of this and say find. And then if we hook up the return value here, what this is doing is we get the number of players. So at the very beginning, this is gonna be zero, right? Because nobody's connected yet. And so it's going to look into our map for index zero and it's gonna return the spawn point for player zero. So the first person that connects is gonna get spawn point zero. The second person that connects is gonna get spawn point one. If we had more people, it would just continue down that road. And so each person will get their own unique spawn point based on their player index. And we just wanna go ahead and return this like so. All right, um, I think that is pretty much good. Uh, one thing I do wanna mention real quick, cause this is a little weird. So like I was saying about Unreal Engine 5 making everything worse. So this is one thing that they also made worse. So I tried to add this function to the begin play because I thought, okay, let's just find all the spawn points um, right at the very beginning. However, um, for whatever reason, choose player or start in Unreal Engine 5 gets called before the begin play gets called. Couldn't really tell you why. Probably just part of their let's make everything worse motto. But yeah, so we have to call it here, which is kind of unfortunate. However, it really doesn't matter in the grand scheme of things because we wrote this function to only do things once. But if you're on an Unreal Engine 4, you can just put this function in the begin play and everything will work nicely. All right, so let's file, save all real quick. And then I think that should be all we need to do to get our player spawning in the correct spot. So let's go ahead and just give this a try. So I'm gonna hit play up top. And you can see we've spawned correctly on the left and on the right. But again, that could just be one of those cases where it just so happens. But if you just keep running this, you'll notice it works every single time where the server is always far from the cube and the, play and the client is always close to the cube. So yeah, basically, hopefully that makes sense to you guys. So um, I think this is a good place to pause and go to the next video. So I'll see you guys in part two.